Hey everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. This is now part three of the Space 1999 Eagle construction. Um, I was going to fit everything, or try to fit everything, into one video, but it really was turning out to be way too long. So I am just going to uh, detail now the rest of um, the modifications I'm making to the model, and uh, so I think you'll find these interesting. But I will do the final reveal in uh, part four, and it'll just be just showing you the completed kit there. So I promise you that is coming right up after this. Um, I will post both videos at the same time. So here we go with part three. All right, so let's move on now to some surface detailing. Now what I'm showing you here is a panel off the box. And uh, you can see that this particular modeler has applied some shading here uh, to um, give some nice detailing here to the model kit. So I really like the way that looks, and I'm going to try and duplicate that. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this. In fact, there is a tutorial on the Round 2 website that will show you how to do this with an airbrush. Essentially what you do here is you take a business card like this, and you just cut out some geometric shapes here, and you're supposed to lay it onto the surface of the model kit and apply your airbrush to give you this type of shading. Now I actually did attempt to do that, but it wasn't really coming out very good, so I'm going to try to do it a different way and use something that I'm very familiar with, and uh, so I'm going to use pastels. So here we have some Tamiya masking tape. This is about five millimeter in width, and essentially all I'm doing is just um, creating some geometric shapes on the surface of the uh, landing pod here, and I'm then going to use pastels, like a gray pastel, uh, to apply some shading, and hopefully it'll give us the same effect. And you can see here now that the effect gives us something similar to what we see on the box. So let me spend a minute to talk about the decals. Um, unfortunately, I did run across a problem with the decals. You know, last video I said I wasn't having any issues, but I did run across a problem with these in particular, as well as another section I'll talk about here in a second. So the purpose of this particular decal is to go underneath the landing pod. You can see I'm already making modifications um, to simulate this cage structure here. Because the model comes with a solid piece, you're supposed to be able to put this um, decal here, and the black area is supposed to simulate, you know, being able to look through there. Um, so the idea is to place this on the bottom of the landing pod, and then you're supposed to fold it uh, where these flaps are here, and it's supposed to rest onto that section. So unfortunately, it didn't work out well for me. Uh, the decals just fell apart. Uh, I tried to soften them up with different solutions, and it really was just a big mess. So I was kind of stuck, and I had to think of a solution. Let me just show you what I came up with. So the first thing to do was to paint that section black. And then I needed to find some way to create the bars that are going to go along here. So what I did was I used this uh, half round rod here, this 0 0.04 inch half round plastic rod, painted them gray, and started installing them like you see here. So it's pretty simple. I'm just uh, taking the rod and measuring out what I need here, and then uh, just uh, using a little bit amount of glue and putting them into place. And let me just go ahead and show you a completed one here. So the other decals that are provided with the sheet are these black triangular sections here. And that's kind of cool because then you wouldn't have to paint it, right? Well, unfortunately, the decals didn't work out that well for me here either. Now, I think the reason why they didn't is because I didn't trim close enough. If you're going to use the decals, you have to trim really along that black line, that black edge, because what ended up happening was I had a little bit of overhang, uh, and I laid the uh, decal down. It wasn't much. I mean, I could hardly tell, but uh, it was enough for me to uh, chip it because I accidentally brushed my finger across it, and the decal just fell apart. Uh, they seemed to be fairly brittle. So that left me with no alternative but to paint, and, uh, you know, um, now that I think about it, it's probably better to do this anyway because if uh, after you put them all together those decals chip um, and you've glued everything and um, assembled everything it's going to be kind of hard to mask it off and at least just a pain anyway to do that so uh, if you're going to paint it just be sure that you're using um, a good masking tape um, I'm using this Tamiya brand here um, it's thinner and easier to work with and uh, fairly simple to apply just make sure when you apply it you're pressing very firmly against the hull so that you don't have any spacing for the uh, paint to bleed through. Now this is the bottom section here, at least the bottom half of the uh, command module, and you can see I also added these white lines. So what I did was I painted the section here, and to create the white lines I didn't use a paintbrush, all I did was use a sharp X-Acto knife to carefully run along the edge of that corner. And because it's a very uh, defined edge, it's very simple to do this, you just have to be careful. 
and uh, just uh, scrape away the paint. And by doing so, you create some nice sharp lines here. Um, also, you can see on the command module, I've used some pastels to uh, do some shading here as well. So that turned out pretty nice. And the next thing to work on now are the main windows here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on that and uh, show you when that's completed. Now, one other modification I'm going to be making here, and uh, you're probably going to think I'm really anal here trying to uh, put all these little details, but um, the decal that goes into this window is fairly small. Um, in fact, it doesn't really cover this entire triangular space there. So what I'm going to be doing then is I'm adding these uh, little rods here. This is a 0 0.022 inch um, square rod. And I'm just creating basically a ledge to this window here, uh, or a frame to the window. And so I'm going to be gluing um, some of these pieces here. You can see one's already in place. And then the decal will sit right inside that framework there. So I'll continue with that, and I'll show you when it's all installed. All right, so here we have now the completed command module. And you can see the rods are in place here, framing those decals. And I, I think it looks pretty nice. So it looked good enough to me that I ended up installing them in the bottom section here as well and creating some nice clean lines. What's interesting is when I took a closer look at the product Enterprise Eagle just a little bit ago, I noticed that there are some rods or some framework around the uh, windows as well. So, um, you know, I just thought of this as a solution to kind of frame those decals, but uh, in the end it looks uh, pretty good here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to a different part of the model and continue to make some progress. So I'd like to go back to the tanks here of the engines, and I just wanted to let you know I ended up installing a few more rods here. Um, again, looking at the product Enterprise Eagles, there were some rods that went horizontally, so I installed those as well. As you can see, those are the two extra rods here that connect these two. And uh, then also some vertical rods that connect this uh, round tank to the lower one as well that runs along the middle section. So moving on forward now with the uh, engines. The uh, rocket engine now, um, Actually, if you look at the studio model, it has a piece that's inserted inside, and I actually bought something like that off of eBay, and that's what these are here. Um, there's a gentleman who sells these on eBay, as well as other things that you can use for your Eagle model, including a staircase and even a laser that pops up from the uh, front module of the ship. If you recall, there was an episode where that happened. Um, he has those types of pieces available, too. And these here, I believe, cost me around $12. And uh, what I'm going to do then is paint them a silver color and insert them into the rocket engines here. So let me go ahead and proceed with that, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so first let me just show you the Enterprise Eagle, and you can see the engine baffles are in place here. So this is the look that we're going after. So let's take you over here and show you how these baffles turned out. All right, you can see they're in place here, and they look pretty nice. So they were pretty simple to work with. The first thing I did was I used... Um, testers uh, steel metalizer as the color and then I use these tweezers here to slide them into place so the way these were installed was you can see first of all that they have to be in this uh, vertical and horizontal um, orientation so when I slid it into place I actually slid them in off angle and then what I did was I applied glue uh, at the openings I used super glue and then I rotated them into position so that way uh, these areas here that contact the bell made contact with the adhesive. Once they were installed, I then applied a little pastel here to kind of dirty them up a little bit. But you can see for very little money, you're adding a uh, very nice detail here to your kit. So again, these uh, ran about $13 total. That was $5 for the item and $8 for shipping. And they were sold by a guy who goes by the name of Psy High Models. Uh, you can um, find him on eBay, but he also has a website, SciHighModels.com, and he has, again, these types of products here for the engines, but also a step ladder um, that goes, or a staircase that goes with your pod, and also a laser turret that uh, pops up from this section here. Um, so a few other items there are available for the Eagle, and he has other sci-fi related items as well. All right, so what's left to do here is essentially just to piece the model together. Um, oh, and by the way, I wanted to show you real quickly here, um, the command module now is all wired up. Uh, the way it's going to work now is that the coin battery is going to slide into the command module, and then the rest of the wires will slide into the front module here. So there is enough tension that if you just um, slide the command module into place here, it will hold. Um, so hopefully, um, it'll always be that way. Um, but that's how I'm going to gain access to the light switch, is whenever I want to turn it on, I just 
simply, simply uh, take the uh, command module off and hit the switch and it'll work out. Uh, so I tested the lights, they actually look pretty decent. Um, I'm not going to show you those right now, I'm going to piece everything together and show you everything when I'm ready to reveal the final um, model here. And one other thing to point out here, I just wanted to show you then the completed sections underneath the landing pods. You can see they turned out pretty well. Uh, essentially it duplicates the look that the decals were going after to begin with. Now just speaking a little bit more about the decals real quick, I'm very happy overall with the look um, that the decals are providing here. You can see from a distance here, this decal sheet that goes underneath these sections here are doing a great job with uh, providing a nice detailed look. Um, they're shaded, they provide these darker areas here, so when you look from a distance it looks like the, the black areas are essentially hollow. You're looking through some uh, structure there, um, and the, the detailing and the shading is a really, really nice touch. So even though I had some issues with the decals, I think the one thing I would advise is just be really careful as you work with them. You know, for the most part, if the decals are smaller, um, they're fairly simple. I would just definitely give it enough time to soak. Uh, because they seem to take a little longer than other decal sheets I've worked with. Um, but uh, just be very careful with them. The ones that I did have issues with, um, I mean, you know, to, to expect a decal that's going to bend that way, it's, it's um, something that I wasn't surprised that it was going to fall apart. But, you know, uh, other people have been able to make it work. So um, it uh, doesn't necessarily have to go this route. But, um, but those are the issues that I came up with. So anyway, I'm ready to put this model together now, as I said. I'm going to add a few more decals here. There's some orange stripes and things I need to put on to the kit as well as the engines. And um, then I will have everything pieced together. Now, I am going to be making a base for this kit. I'm not going to give you much detail about that. I'm just going to show you um, the base when it's, everything is uh, completed and put together. And hopefully you'll like what I come up with. Alright, so I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Um, we are very close to finishing, so I will see you shortly here, so stay tuned.